right, today we're looking at the 8-Bit Do, even though I want to call it 8-Bit Do, arcade stick. Now, it just feels like a missed opportunity not calling it 8-Bit Do. But anyways, the 8-Bit Do arcade stick. This is for the Nintendo Switch, your Windows PC, also plays with Steam, Raspberry Pi, so it's got a lot of versatility to it. But get this box out of the way. Inside the box, you get this beautiful arcade stick. You get a very lengthy USB-C charging cable that also doubles as a USB cable to connect this and play this with a wired connection because if you're a dedicated diehard fight game fan you know wired connections obviously always going to be the best option. Speaking of connections this has them in spades so not only can you do this wired you can play wirelessly with the use of a dongle for 2.4 gigahertz connection wirelessly or you can play over bluetooth. Now ranking those connections Wired's going to be your first best connection. Number two is going to be using that wireless dongle. And number three is going to be Bluetooth in terms of latency. Bluetooth, you will see the most latency. Everything else is going to be negligible. You're not even going to really notice it in wireless. At least I hadn't noticed it. And wired is just going to be absolutely perfect for you in terms of latency, delay, inputs, things like that. But looking at the joystick, it is hefty. It weighs a solid five pounds. It's got a nice thick metal plate inside of it. If you drop this, on your foot you will have a bad time it's got some decent size to it it's about a foot wide about eight inches across and deep so it's good enough to fit on your lap it's not going to be doing wheelies because it's it's heavy you're not going to get your wrist on here and it's just magically raising up and flipping up and things like that the overall aesthetic obviously it's meant to kind of mimic and look like the nes console the shades are slightly off and i'm sure that's probably for legal purposeful reasons everything came with these nice little protective button stickers the buttons themselves sandwall clone buttons sandwall clone joystick it has a square restrictor gate inside there that i can feel but everything feels nice we got this kind of glossy finish behind the buttons up top we got all sorts of doohickeys and controls there's this weird kind of like multi-language Cover that comes off and on. I think that was kind of silly. But. Up here in the top left hand corner you have your switch. This goes from Nintendo Switch. So when you do that you see the lights come on and off. That's for when you have it paired with your Nintendo Switch. Turning it off of course and then X. This is for your X input, your Windows PC, your Steam inputs, Xbox, that type of thing is going to utilize that X. The secondary knob we have over here is the left stick the D-pad and the right stick. So for games that use the left analog stick as their directional thing, you turn it to the left and voila, your joystick is now corresponding to the left analog stick. Turn it to the middle, you've got the D-pad, your joystick now corresponds with the D-pad, so on and so forth with the right stick. Then you have your wireless pairing button up here. You have your turbo button, you have a home button, and you got a toggle switch to go from Bluetooth to your wireless 2.4 gigahertz. You have select and start, and then you have player one, player two, as well as your eight action buttons. Well, one cool thing here on the buttons themselves is when you're switching between switch modes. So I'll go ahead and turn it to the switch. You see, we got these LED indicators showing where our buttons are for the switch. However, that's not where you'd want them for, let's say you're hooking it up to a PC and you're playing Street Fighter V on the PC. Well, you'll turn it to the X input and magically the LEDs change themselves and correspond to the computer or an Xbox controller. So that's super handy. And if you don't like the current layout, they have an awesome free software, their ultimate software, where you can do custom controller configurations, remap all the buttons, however you see fit, as well as set up some macros. So you can set up two macros for these player one and player two buttons, which if you're into cheating, that's the way to go because you can basically type in a macro for a special move, make it assigned to this player one or player two button here. And then voila, when you're playing a fighting game, literally all you'll have to do is press one button and it does a combo for you. So no one's the wiser. If you love to cheat, that is the way to cheat of the future. No more game genies, things like that. That That's cheating with macros. That's how you do it. But again, free software, absolutely recommend it if uh, you're, you're looking to cheat or reconfigure things. And then on the back, we have a hidden door here. Pop it down. This is where it stores the wireless dongle that you'll use for the 2.4 gigahertz connection. And then it's also in there where you're gonna have your USB-C charging port so you can charge as well as plug in that wired connection. The cable, like I said, super duper long. It's several feet long. If I get this plastic off here. 
yeah, lasso it across the room. This thing is gonna be more than long enough for you to plug into. Overall, it's a great little joystick. It's been out for a little while. It came out towards the end of 2020. Everyone's basically saying the same thing. It's a great joystick overall. I like the versatility of it. The fact that it's compatible with the Switch and the PC and Raspberry Pi and things like that makes this all the more valuable. Less than $100. I'll put a product link down in the video description box below for one of the cheapest places I could find it online right now. Uh, I've played loads of games, arcade games, Switch games, PC games. This thing performs phenomenally. Like I said, it is Sanwa clone components, but you can switch this all out. In fact, that's what we're going to do right now because I'm going to switch all these components out to actual Sanwa components. So 8-Bit Do and their marketing and their infinite wisdom have called this the ultra moddable arcade stick. And uh, I mean, that's kind of true, but it's got a, a massive like asterisk disclaimer to it because originally this said this was compatible with hap joysticks and buttons, and that is 100% incorrect. You can't, can't even get them in there without having to like just basically get rid of the bottom casing. So like technically, yeah, you could install a hap joystick on here, but then you wouldn't have a base. You would just have a bare joystick sticking out and stab it into your leg. Uh, basically what this is going to be compatible with is Sanwa style drop-in buttons. So no long stem buttons. So my personal preference are these hap competition buttons. They will not fit in here because of the way the inside of the shell is. And then joysticks, you'll need things like Sanwa JLF or Sumitsu. Um, you're not going to be able to get those American style hap joysticks or the industrial Lorenzo or anything like that, unfortunately. And then the second thing they did that just makes my head just go in circles is they said it's ultra moddable, but the very first thing, before you even remove the bottom casing, you got to have a special screwdriver. So you got to have one of these Torx number 10 screwdrivers, which is not something everybody has in their normal toolbox. It's not a Phillips, it's not a flathead screw. It's those Torx screws. So right out of the gate, that blew, blew my mind that I had to, you know, whip out the old Torx screwdriver, but you got six screws. Once you take those out, we should be able to pry off the shell here. There we go. So there's the first connection. You're gonna disconnect here. Very simple. There's that massive plate I was telling you about. This is what's really giving it the weight and the heft. Once you discard this and put it to the side, this thing is very lightweight, but inside you'll see a mess of wires. What we need to do is we need to, number one, if we're replacing the joystick, which we are, you need to take all that out. The buttons themselves, this is the one thing they did right as far as making it ultra moddable, is made these quick disconnects on here. So you're simply just gonna pry those off. Some of them will be easy, some of them will be hard. They just come off like that pinch the button to push it out. There we go. But the buttons themselves, like I said, you're just going to pinch on the sides there and they push out, disconnect them. I'm not going to be replacing these top two. To me, they're just, they don't get used enough. But what I am replacing them with is genuine Sanwa push buttons. They're literally just going to pop right in there. Now, if you're wondering why you couldn't put the long stem buttons in there. So if I try to put that in there, going to catch on the lip and then I wouldn't be able to screw down the nut that holds these down because of these LED boards for the buttons themselves. So unfortunately no long stem buttons which means no hap or anything like that. Getting my new button, line it up there with the grooves for the push in rings. Might need to twist a little. There we go. Should hear that satisfactory snap. Get our Disconnect wires, put them right back on there. Make sure we're lining them up good and they're actually snug onto the clasp there. There we go. Now we're gonna do that to each one of the buttons and then we'll come back and do the joystick. All right, we got the new yellow buttons installed. They look nice. I like that black and yellow color scheme. Uh, you don't have to swap all this stuff out. Like I said, the Sanwa clone buttons and joysticks, they're, they're fine. 90% of people, they're going to absolutely be a okay with the stock components. But for those of us that like the higher end quality components, this is definitely the way to go. And again, going back to that crazy ultra moddable marketing gimmick that they're putting out there, this joystick, 
So it's a sandwall clone, so essentially you should be able to swap out components and things like that. And technically you can. So the square restrictor gate, you can just pop it off, put on an octagonal or a circle one if you wish. Um, if you want to switch out the spring, that's going to be a little bit of a pain just because they used a very, very small horseshoe clip. In fact, I can't even really get a screwdriver in there. But they soldered on the connections of the wires themselves, so you can't even like really switch out the switches or anything. It just... It blows my mind that they would market this as being super easy and ultra moddable when in fact they did silly things in the manufacturing process that make it difficult. But regardless, I suggest removing this joystick altogether. I'll be swapping in a Sanwa JLF joystick that I've got an eight, you know, eight way octagonal restrictor gate on there. I've got a six pound spring as well. And then I'll also be putting on the bat top because I am a player of bat top. I want that hap joystick, but I can't, so that's the closest I can get. But anyways, we'll take that out. We need to disconnect this cable right here. Make sure we'll cut this little zip tie here so we can separate the wires easily from the joystick and the rest, because we don't want to remove this wiring harness. This is for our buttons. We want to remove this one, make sure it's all separated away from everything else so we can remove the joystick. We gotta make sure we remove the ball top so we can take the joystick out of the base. Ball top pops off, joystick slides out, and there we are. Now we've got all these stock parts out. So when putting a new joystick in, you have a couple of options. You can desolder the existing connections on the connector that went into that port right there. A lot of time and energy, I don't recommend that. What I recommend is getting one of these cheap five pin connectors that is made to go with something like these connect it there. Got our five pins. We're gonna make sure it is facing the left hand side. So facing towards the buttons, the other end of our five pin connection. I'm going to put it all the way to the left. Now you'll notice it does have some raised notches. One will go in there nice and smooth on this side. However, it's gonna have to get a little forced in there you can shave this little bit off if you need to this here on the right hand side or you can do what I do just apply a little pressure and it's good to go you can also solder the wires into these connection points on the far end of the board here and once we got the joystick connected we're gonna get our connection that we disconnected at the beginning you can re-zip tight if you wish but it'll be all right close it back on the shell Put our screws back in and we'll be good to go. So far, I'd say the joystick's doing pretty good. 